more on now because I'm joined by Nuri Tukel, who's the vice chair at the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. Nuri Tukel, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, I just wonder, given the, uh, the record over the last couple of years uh, in terms of Beijing's response to the allegations regarding the Uyghur community, whether you feel any progress at all is made in, in getting to the truth of this. Um, first of all, thank you very much for covering this uh, incredibly uh, heart-wrenching uh, story that many media organizations and governments have, uh, have not been uh, covered and talked about uh, enough. Uh, the Chinese government's uh, own statement shows that they have intention to break their lineage, break Uyghurs' roots, and break the Uyghurs' uh, connections, and the break Uyghurs' origin. The story just, you just broadcasted uh, about these uh, broken families uh, speaks to that fact. So it's not because what we're saying is happening in the, uh, the Uyghur's homeland, uh, Xinjiang, that the Uyghurs call East Turkestan. It's because of what the Chinese government is saying in public uh, in the open source information provided the research. So um, we, we have made some progress, uh, governmentally, societally, uh, as far as the community is concerned, but there are a lot to be done. Uh, the international community has been... Uh, tepid and mindemiring in their uh, responses. Uh, only a handful of governments, including the United States, UK, and others, have publicly taken a position did, and, and yeah. imposed did, uh, certain measures. But uh, did, well, do you have any, do you, sorry to interrupt you, no, do you have any confidence that that will change and that there will be a concerted international effort to, to force China's hand here? It has to, it has to be, uh, there has to be a ways to make them stop. Uh, I think the international community so far, uh, led by the United States and our, our partners and allies, uh, particularly in Europe, doing exactly the right thing, calling the Chinese out for these evil, uh, uh, evil uh, policies and the atrocities committed against a vulnerable ethnic and religious minority. At the same time, we are uh, going after their economic interests. The, the specifically the technology aspect, the Chinese using technology to, uh, to advance, uh, intensify its uh, uh, criminal acts against the Uyghur people. There's no country around the world that treats the Muslims the way that the Chinese does. And there's no country around the world that uses AI for racial profiling. So well, that we, have, uh, we have to focus on China's economic interest, technological interest, and also their global image. Those are the three things they care deeply about. Right, so, and on that uh, third point of the global image, I think you're, you're another um, very ardent supporter of a boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics. Yes, uh, that, that needs to be done. Uh, first of all, we have to relocate the Olympics to a country that does not commit a genocide. If we don't have enough time to do that, we could uh, postpone it, as the Tokyo uh, Summer Olympics has been. Mm. And also, if these two methods doesn't work, I think the uh, civilized world, liberal democracies, yeah. should boycott right. diplomatically. Well, we wait to see if that will happen, because there's no huge sign of, of a, a move in that direction. Nuri, I do just want to touch on one very personal point for you, because this is a personal story to you, isn't it, for your, your own upbringing? Yes, I was born in the re-education camp uh, during the height of the Cultural Revolution. It seems to me that there's no escape for me and my fellow Uyghurs around the world from the Chinese oppression. This has been ongoing uh, repressive policies as far as, far as uh, you know, I can remember, as long as I have been breathing. So, so the international community must take an action collectively or individually to stop this madness. Yeah, Nuri Turkel, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.